ends of a rope together. This is old rope, so it's it's going to be more difficult than new rope. But just to give you an example of how it works, hopefully it works. We'll see anyway. Um, yeah, there's not much not much give in this at all. We'll see how it works anyway. Um, there's always new ropes always best to work with, obviously. But uh, the first thing to do, again, using the same tools, I've got the Selma splicing kit, and you find the correct fit for the length of tube you're working with. which in this case will be this one so you mark that mark that first there like so one and This did not work as the old rope uh, was too stiff and I could not get inside it or uh, get access to the inner core. So I decided to select another piece of rope. Right, try another piece of rope now. Um, <clears throat> still old rope, but hopefully a bit better function. Just Tape up the ends, as I say, masking tape is better than sellotape, but in my case, sellotape is all I've got at the moment. But again, make sure the inner core is free to travel, so cut off the ends where it might be sealed. And we do the same as we did before, two fed lengths. One. Two. Same on the other side. So the tape's not gripping. One. And two. Go to the second section and then try and prise the inside out, the inner core out. Not the easiest job in the world. Again, it's harder on older rope because it it's it tends to have got dirt inside, <coughs> salt inside. Certainly, if you've been using it on your boat, and so it's not easy to. I have known people to cut the rope, uh, cut the strands, the outer strands, to make a gap, uh, but this does weaken the job that you're trying to do. I think that's the inner core I'm calling out. I say so once you get it started it's fairly easy after that but at the moment there. Whew. Not an easy task. That's the worst part about all this but otherwise it works quite well. Let's see how difficult this one is now. Is dig deep, dig as deep down as you can inside the core and then try and prize out what you can get. I 
and often you'll end up with bits of the inner core which you can work with the thing is to keep on checking make sure you're not catching the outer strand <coughs> but once you've done that you're away <coughs> so I've caught the well I don't know what that is some form of inner nope new to me that one That off. Take your thread again, and this time we're going to move the thread from this first mark. Remember that was the thread length from the beginning. So we're going to try and get this inside here. Having removed the inner core, we're going to slide this through. Because this is not stretching as much as I would like, I'm using a thinner thread, which makes it easier to travel down the core there, but it makes it more difficult to focus this, to make sure that this stays in one place. Don't know whether that I can do that or not. Because you take the other end now, the other end of the rope. No, it's not catching that. It's not catching, unfortunately. This one's very tight. I say on a new rope, you wouldn't have this problem. But because it's an old rope, and the trick is not to catch any of the out, outer strands otherwise you, you're trying to force them through and obviously it won't go no, can't get that through at all <coughs> and this one's just too small to, to grip if I could grip get that to grip in in the slot there it'd be alright if it pull it through but unfortunately it's not it's not sufficient to grip so we use the uh, smaller fed get through here and what they say is to take it just past the first mark the second mark and where you pulled the inner core out really trouble is even with the smaller fid this is so tight because it's old rope but we'll persevere. We'll see how we get on. And try if you can not to catch the inner core. Very difficult to, to do that. But with a new rope, it's easy. With an old rope, not so easy. In the past, I've used pliers to pull that section out I don't advise that because I did damage the fid no it's not a not going to be an easy job this once I can get over that lump 
which you start to pass through a lot easier. It's like everything else. I say the temptation is to use pliers on these, but uh, I've damaged them before, so I tend not to do that now. Just caught one strand there that I've just cut off because I don't feel like taking it all the way back again. Caught one strand of the inner core, which I've just only a little bit, but it's enough to stop it. Yeah, might be a good idea to try and stretch the outer core because this is getting very, very tight now. But at this moment is in time, I'll tell you. very tempting to just get the pliers and pull it through. I say if you do that you will damage the fits. These strands, stretch these strands as much as possible to give it a wider opening. Because the rope is just not, not allowing it to pull through at the moment. Had I've used the right size thread, I wouldn't have needed the seller tape on that. But you can see, thank goodness, <laughs> uh, the seller tape has caused a bit of a problem there. Apart from it being sticky, fortunately it held, uh, otherwise, I would have had to go through all that process again. But uh, as I say, it's um, it made that very difficult because the cellar tape started to come away, and the glue on the cellar tape made it more sticky than it needed to be. So bits of cellar tape all over the thread now. And that's very sticky then. So we're just going to take it back to our original mark. Make sure you don't pull it out. I don't want to go through all that again. Here's our original mark. Our first fit mark. So we're going to do the same process now. Uh, I'll try with the bigger fit and see whether that will that will be any easier. I don't think it will. Um, yeah. So again, once more, we've got to go right the way through there, right to the end, and out. Far too tight, then. Far too tight. And you can see, again, just not using. I wonder if I tapered that. Is not what they show. I'm just wondering if I taper that, get that safely chucked up inside there.
very difficult trying to get this just to grip because I've tapered that this time I'll try and push that all inside make it neater I'm not saying it will but it may make it easier Just have that lovely well caught there and then it came off. As I say, it is essential that it's hooked on tight. Otherwise it'll just slide off. back where you started I don't think they'll get in the way but let's be safe and sorry he says You can see this one's showing extreme resistance already. Um, unlike the previous one, which didn't show resistance to the end, and I think it's possibly because I've got sellotape on this uh, the previous sellotape is I should have cleaned it off really possibly made it a bit easier Again, it's about teasing these threads so that they open up. That really is the key to it, to keep. As I say, with a new rope, when you bunch it up, there's loads of room inside between the core. 
on the outer but when it's older it tends to stretch thin out and you can't get the the gap that you need really because the rope is nowhere near as pliable as it was You can see the cellar tape starting to bunch up there already. So the glue on the cellar tape will start to show through. To be a bit of a problem. say go a few centimeters past not a lot and then make sure you can come out without hopefully without getting tangled up in the outer threads or certainly the inner core it's the inner core that's the important bit because if you get caught up in that you're not going to come out you just continue to drag the inner core through tape is still causing a problem yeah it's really bunching up now yeah that cellar tape is, is really bunching up so it's making it fatter than it should be So you can see there, that's really bunched up now. That's a big thick piece of rope. It's thicker than the rope it actually is. Uh, so I think the idea to cut all that away Go and clean that off, make that more slippy. I've cleaned all that cellar tape off now, and uh, lost where I'm up to. Right, get the cellar tape off here as well. And see if I can stretch this to be as thin as possible. Because just that initial bump 
there that causes the problem. And if I can make sure that this pinned in, caught by the hook on this, which it is, without using the sellotape, I think that might benefit and also make sure I've got lots and lots of slack in this, this outer core. I'll have another go and see where we get to. In order to pull it through, just a bit past the mark once more try and get the end out without wrapping up in any of the threads once you've done that you can try and get that through then bit further than we got last time. I need a bit though. You say the difficulty is there's nothing really to hold that but rope on now. Same problem as last time we get to the end although we did get there a lot faster this time. We have now to get the whole rope out of a very tiny gap so you need to stretch those threads as much as possible there the main rope out over there now you can introduce the pliers to get hold of that outer rope and there we have it. So that's that's where we're up to. That was a bit easier than with the sellotape. And I think, to be honest with you, this this draw rope, I don't know what that is. Uh, haven't come across that before. Perhaps someone can explain what it is. I found that a lot easier. Final stages, this is a bit simpler now. Uh, make sure all your sellotapes off the ends there. Uh, take the sellotape off. Just um, pull out the rope really. Uh, just make sure everything's fine with the rope. Both ends are free because you're going to have to pull those back in now and then just take the full coil and go around the full coil make sure everything's okay with the coil and they, there's your join there and then that's it and then all you do then is just pull that in through there just cut that a slight angle there so we can get it in just taper that a bit and then pull that into the core like so neatly done and then the same with this taper this end pull that into the core
I just have to feed some round. Just pull it tight and make sure that that disappears. Get rid of any loose ends. And there. And then for these sections, you can mark it if you want. Just mark it. Just pull it out a bit. And then roughly where your core joins. <coughs> Cut that off. Same with the other end. Pull that out. Bit. push it off and then just from the end of your, from the middle of your rope just pull that back around now so you pull that you seize that core back in make sure that that core is fully tucked in and the same with the other side. Pull that in. Get some really, this is where you burn your fingers. And then down there, put my cord in. Is there so that's just to count a bit, tease that a bit more. Until it's gone, and there you have it one finished rope, little bits all over the finished rope. You can just about see the join there, but that now is a strong one permanent loop. Not the easiest jobs on old rope. Uh, once again, very satisfying when you do it, but well worth having a go. Um, if you get a new rope, uh, it, it really is reasonably simple. I won't say it's simple. But it's reasonably simple. Uh, that was just a demonstration. It can be done on an old rope. As I say, watch premium ropes video. They show you how to do it properly.